Gruesome Magazine. Hello once again. I am Doc Rotten, and this is Horror News Radio, the official Gruesome Magazine podcast. Back with me again this week are the scariest, goriest, bloodiest co-host on the net. And tonight we are covering episode five of Lovecraft Country. Oh, this this series is kicking it, killing it, and oh, it got nasty this week. Nasty, nasty. Uh, but stick around. <laughs> You're going to like this. All right, but let me introduce the crew, starting off with uh, Christopher G. Moore, award-winning filmmaker. Don't ever say nasty like that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just want to rip out of my skin right about now. Oh! But, um, boom. Boom. Um, worse. but yeah. What? What Did you guys watch this episode? Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, th- literally... If you could, if you could just have OMG just pop in front of your head, <laughs> <laughs> this episode. I mean, I, I was thinking, I was like, you know what? This is you don't see this much on television anymore, where it's just like every kind of extreme, from gore to sex to other things. Wow, uh, I was like, yeah. And there's a lot of stuff even behind this, you know, in the background. Like what? So yeah, this just whoa. Yeah. All right. It's going to be a lot to talk about. All right. Also joining us is podcasting rock star and international cosplay queen, Vanessa Thompson. How are you doing, Vanessa? Good. Doing good. Yeah, there was a lot. It was a heavy episode, but I really loved that. Not to get too much into it, but I love that we get to know more about Ruby and Montrose in this episode. And those are some powerful freaking stories we just got. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there was. There's um yeah, this this movie's this episode's got it's like all. a movie. There was so much in it. Every episode's like a movie. It is. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Also, we have special ghost host Christopher Slattery, known as the Slap Man. How you doing, sir? I was right. <laughs> you were right. You were right. You're right. It's absolutely Vindicated. four yes. weeks in the making. I was yes. right. Yes. Damn it. You were. All right. So what we do is we kind of give our first impression. <laughs> we talk about the show a little bit, and then, then we wrap things up with uh, Final Thought or Score, one to five, which I think we're all going to get five. And then uh, uh, the best part, favorite scene. Stick around for that. You're going to want to hear it. All right. So let's find out what we thought. Um, since uh, the slap man was right, let's start, <laughs> let's start with him. What was your first impression of Lovecraft Country? I thought, it was a, I thought it was a good episode. Um, I... I thought I I really liked how we spent more t- a lo- well, not just more time, a lot of time with Ruby, um, yes. and uh, really fleshed out her character. And it was nice that um, while we still got a little bit of our main leads, they kind of took a step back for the rest of the cast to shine, and that was awesome. Um, as always, um, a lot of great messages coming uh, from the show uh, and the writers. Um, uh, this time, kind of positive with negative, which is nice to see. But you know, um, it was it. It's still great. Um, I will say that uh, it's starting. If I had to nitpick, oh oh. It's starting to kind of get on my nerves that they're using a lot of modern music com- mm. instead of just sticking with air um, music from the 50s. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. It, it kind of takes me out when I hear like Cardi B and stuff in this show. <laughs> but if, if I have to nitpick. Yeah, that, that would be nitpicking. All right. Um, no, fair enough. Fair enough. But it, it's still great. It's awesome. Nope. So great. All right. Up next is Vanessa. Vanessa, what is your first impression of Lovecraft Country so far? Oh, fantastic. So fantastic. Like Chris was saying, Ruby's story is so powerful. The transformation she goes through Mm. is just an incredible, my heart just hurt so many times. And, And Montrose as well, you know, it gives you a completely different understanding of who he is as a person and why he is the way he is as a person. And, you know, it was really just some heavy stuff and some very, uh, like a lot of body horror in this one, which I, uh, for some reason I didn't necessarily expect. Uh, Not that it's, it's completely in line with Lovecraftian horrors to have, to have bought this kind of body horror, but I, maybe the way that that it was presented, I didn't expect, and I really, really liked it. And it was beautiful. The way that they did it was just beautiful. Anyways, I'm 
that's beyond first impression. That's good. Good God. All right. Up next is Christopher G. Moore, award winning filmmaker, I must say. Uh, what was your first impression of Lovecraft Country? Something. Well, to quote the, the slap man, they literally fleshed out Ruby's character. <laughs> um, um, uh -huh. Whoa. I, 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 yeah, I was not expecting as much uh, nudity, as much gore, um, as much. Uh, uh, just, well, <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a loogie part, which I'm like, uh, that's a lot of loogie. Yeah. Uh, but you might need that. Um, footwear. Footwear. Yeah, a lot of foot. Oh, well, I, I think it, it, to, <laughs> to continue my Harry Potter analogies, I, my my new name for this episode is Ruby Batiste and the Deathly Stilettos. That is, <laughs> that's, nice. And also, uh, nice. because there's a little bit of polyjuice potion <laughs> used with uh, transformation. Uh -huh. um, uh, hey, I know. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I the, it, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I, I, I thought the, you know, I wasn't sure to what level they were going to go to certain things. And it's like, whoa, uh, that, that sex scene between, uh, Letty and Atticus is freaking hot and, uh, steamy, steamy. I, mm, oh, uh, <laughs> sm <laughs> That actress, uh, ooh, I'm heating up just thinking about it. Um, that's pretty hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I was, you know, and then we, you know, well, we don't get to see as much of uh, uh, Miss Malfoy, <laughs> Christina Braithwaite, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was kind of disappointed in that. Not in the that's beginning. Just, that's just me being a, a you know. Uh, anyway, let's yes. get beyond my horniness. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I love this episode, and also the transformations. Um, I thought it's gonna be one of those things where, like, oh, they just show this brutal transformation the first time. No, they keep going back to that, and it's like, I, I mean, I personally think it's it's on the level of almost like um, uh, American Wolf in London type, mm. because it's 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 such a mm -hmm. brutal transformation to where there's just people just splitting out of their skin, and it looks like their their face is just hanging off their head. Mm -hmm. It's so bloody. Um, and so gross, you know, and then there's like, there's that one cool thing where, you know, you see like the, the, the hands come up through the body and stuff. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man. I mean, there's just so many great things. I was like, Whoa. And then there's like, I, I know this is less of a first impression as well, but there, there's a whole thing with like, you even see like brief things in the background, like the sheriff when he takes his shirt off and he's got like, he's got almost like a, a, a black person's skin you know you know almost like a frankenstein a different you know different types of colored skin on him and it's like what is going on with that so there's like so many little little uh, uh easter egg type things and like i don't i want to know what happens next you know like what what the hell's happening to that guy in the closet um but yeah also did you guys I, I, the whole time i'm i'm watching i was like i've you know when she turns into the hillary I was like, who is this Hillary person? I've seen oh, her yeah. somewhere before. Yes, yes. You, you know where she's from, right? We just brought that up. Yeah, so I was like, uh, isn't that sure. episode That's Del, two. the, the yes. woman with the crazy dogs, which is a totally yeah. different character. So, um, and I guess evidently in the book, she, she supposedly goes into a coma and they use the similar potion to keep her alive. So maybe that ties into that. Okay, but, that anyway. makes sense. So anyway, I, I don't know. I was just like, there's so many like WTF moments and... Uh, Oh, and they don't shy away from the stiletto part either. No, they do not. It's like oh, you just you see, like, and it's like, okay, okay, I've I've seen enough of that going in. Let's 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 move on. Mm -hmm. But no, they keep crazy. So yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I, I, anyway, yeah. This I was like, this 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 show is mind blowing. It's just that every time when you think they can't shock you or do something a little bit WTF, they like, no, hold my beer. <laughs> uh, here's something else so yeah it's it's very although uh, i'm one of those people when i see awkward moments i get really stressed out and anxious i had to stop it at one point when she like she puts on a thing and goes in for the interview because I, I got so <laughs> i got so anxious about it i was like oh i don't want to be in that situation because you know it's one of those sort of it could be one of those comedic situations that people get into when they're trying to portray someone else so but anyway 
I'll shut up. I, <laughs> I was kind of in that same boat when she uh, when she went up to. Oh God, I don't remember her name, but uh, when she, um, but when Ruby kind of had the freak out um, for the uh, only black person on staff and uh was like was going on and on about how she needs to be better because she doesn't want to be tied up and all with your her tongue stuck out i was like oh this is like almost pause worthy like mm-hmm. this is like rough yeah, Tamara? yeah. was it her name Tamara? yeah i think so yeah that sounds that, right yeah there's a, there's a lot going on in this episode you know the the whole having her having ruby see the world through you know that skin um really she really got to see a little bit more than she was expecting and uh the first yeah at first she started to kind of you know take advantage of it and appreciate it but then she started realizing no this this really sucks and uh i i like that i really like that that's where they went with this and um uh there's a whole lot of things going on with with her exploring that and and not running you know because she was free to leave but no she was like no let's try this out i uh there's also a lot of great character moments with other characters. I, even though uh, Letty and Tick, uh, they, you know, they're not really in the forefront. When they are on screen, there's a lot going on. There's a scene between them because, uh, because, well, uh, Tick goes off on on Montrose early in the episode, and it's rather shocking and violent, and it really sends uh, Letty a little bit, you know in the worry zone, right? She's kind of like, "Uh Oh, what have I gotten myself into with this guy? Uh, But when he, you know, their, their discussion later about it, it's just so, it's such great character moment, just great writing and, and the great dialogue between the two of them and great, um, great emotion. These two actors are fantastic. Journey Smollett and Jonathan majors, Mm -hmm. just fantastic. And, they sizzle. I mean, they sizzle. The chemistry between them is amazing. The scene <laughs> is mm-hmm. one of the steamiest scenes I've seen in a while. Um, but and then, of course, you know, with Ruby, we've been talking about Ruby a lot. But I, Montrose, uh, Michael Kenneth Williams, really is wonderful in this episode. There, mm-hmm. he's he, something he, just popped into my mind. I have to because I'm going to forget it. He doesn't say a word the entire episode. I just realized that as we we're talking about him now, Does it? It doesn't he say doesn't anything? say a single word the entire episode. Oh, wow. Because and I, that's really hmm. poignant. And now that I'm realizing it. Yeah. Because what his character goes through is, is it's a metamorphosis as well in, in a, in a very different way, but relevant way for him. And he's by the end of the episode, he's more free than he's ever been. And, I, I don't know. I really love seeing that. I really love seeing him look around that, 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 that dance hall and realize, you know, where he is and what he is and, mm-hmm. and, and embrace it instead of, uh, you know, cause you, I, at first I was afraid that he was, it was, it was going to come out negative, right. There was going to mm-hmm. be a, a, a violent conflict, but no, he, um, yeah, just the, yeah, when they pick him up and carrying him away, it was just oh my gosh! It was, it was, what 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 a great oh uh, many tears for yeah sure. what, a, what a great character <laughs> moment um yeah I I really appreciated that uh and of course everything with Ruby oh my gosh Ruby has be- you know quickly become a favorite character and she has quite possibly one of the best final lines in the show so <laughs> um and uh, yeah might might have to make a shirt for uh, for the slap man. Based on that line, <laughs> that's exactly what he said on the first episode. Um, maybe with you know different language, but the same thing. Um, uh, yeah, so that it, uh, yeah, that reveal if the spoilers is there, and uh, wow, wow, we we do it, but uh, and talk yeah. about special effects, Christopher G. Moore. Um, during that final transformation, you could see your head come up the back. And then mm-hmm. pop and go into it, and then it kind of, eyeball. kind of, uh, yeah, the eyeball. Oh my god, the eyeball in the, in the mouth. Yes, yes. Crazy. Oh man. Um, yeah, there's so. a, um, there's a Instagram. I've started following a lot of the people that are affiliated with it. Mm-hmm. I think uh, uh, Vanessa uh, pointed me to somebody, and then I like, ooh, mm-hmm. I see this person yeah. and this director, and so now I'm like, and then they, they had one of it posted uh, a little. Um, 
uh, storyboard of that sequence of how like Ooh, the hands are. That was Misha Green. She posted. Um, that. But yeah, it's like it. Yeah, I just love that where you can see like the hands moving on, and 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 I mean parts of it you can sort of see a little bit CGI, but I think when it gets into that the bloody transformation with the hand, I mean it makes me wonder because I know that I guess KB Effects is doing the effects for them. How much of that is what? But um. But the yeah, flesh hanging off. Oh my god, the flesh hanging off because it yeah. just you can see like the face hanging off. <clears throat> um, it, it's it's so like it's so crazy brutal, but at the same time, you know, you understand that it's it's more of a transformation, and we've sort of seen that in different things. I think even was it Eli Roth had like a like a werewolf show on Netflix or whatever that they had people growing out of other people and i think company wolves had sort of something like that but nothing to this mm -hmm. level of just like breaking through it just like it's like you like it's a shirt or something of flesh and like just cocoon. yeah just seeing it drop off and you can see like okay. pieces of like the face and stuff fall on the ground and stuff and it's so bloody um I the sound of, effects man oh the god sound effects oh god when perfect. you hear the cracking and stuff <laughs> yes the cracking the, 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 the plops of flesh falling down yeah i i oh i just want to quote there's a there's a guy on twitter i follow who actually writes for bloody disgusting john squires he's at freddy in space um he's he said the latest episode of lovecraft country is one of the wildest most gruesome hours of television i've seen in a while the show continues to boldly adapt the book on its own terms dialing everything up to 11 while never losing sight of what's the most most important the characters and i think that's a good encapsulation yeah. of what this show is doing mm -hmm. that it's not just about the the special effects are part of it but it's not just about that it's all in 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 part and and sort of allowing us to see this and it's such a brilliant episode how you know it kind of reminds me i don't know if you ever saw that that saturday night live eddie murphy thing where he like get, puts like white makeup on and he goes on a bus and he's treated differently when the black person goes <laughs> off of it it kind of reminds me of that because when she's like going around town and the woman's like oh you don't have to pay for your the guy's like you don't have to pay for your ice cream it kind of yeah. reminded me of that a little bit um yeah but, how sad that she couldn't give that up too or in her mind she had to do it again well, to feel normal well and i think that you have different people you even have like the christina character who had in mm -hmm. order to do certain things she has to transform into this guy version of herself and and then you also you have um the Montrose character who throughout his whole life, he's trying to sort of like be this straight person, but in, in, mm -hmm. he has this inner tor turmoil, which I, I think a lot, a lot of it, he took out on Atticus because mm -hmm. even Atticus has a little bit of um, probably a little bit of homophobia. Cause you have that one episode where it's like, I'm not a sissy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have a little bit of that where, you know, and then you also see like the built up anger. Cause he, this whole time he's been beat by Montrose and he finally takes that on him. And also you have the Ruby character when she just goes off on all this stuff that she's dealt with all her life. And I think a good moment of that, when she's even in that white woman's skin, when she first is walking down that street and she's holding her hands up because she's so used to being the scared person. All right. But, but you know, her currency, like she said, is being that white woman. It's not about the money. Mm -hmm. It's about just the, the prestige and the, you know, the ability to not have to be afraid for yeah. people to be afraid of, of her. her well, know? I'm sure Chris picked up on this too. When Christina says, uh, it's the son of Adam or whatever is William's birthright. She very distinctly says that's William's birthright. And you know, he will own it. He will have it again. And that was, that's super powerful for her to be saying that knowing that she is, I, I, so does that mean that maybe William did exist or is in a coma somewhere? Was mm -hmm. like maybe the male heir that she's now taking on? Well, she, talked about, she did talk good. about something happened to him. She was yeah, yeah, um, in that whole mo yeah. that whole dialogue there. But you know the that whole montage thing they they do that. Um, it's a what is it? It's called a choreo poem called for color girls who have considered suicide mm -hmm. when the rainbow is enough. And that specific thing is it's a rumination on gendered racism, black femininity and liberation. So it's interesting. They, I love how they integrate um, when they, they have specific things from history and they integrate that into the scene to sort of add different levels to what's happening. Um, I do agree a little bit with, with the slap man about like the inclusion of like, current music i think we had that in a previous episode because we're so used to like i think it was the last music. one yeah yeah and i was like well i was kind of thrown off uh 
but it, but then you know it kind of plays into the characters, I guess. Although that, you know, I, we are dealing with magicians; they're wizards, so maybe they are listening yeah. to current. I have to play devil's advocate. Maybe. I have to play devil's advocate to that because I think it, what they're doing with that is trying to make it culturally relevant for the time now. Yeah. Because the statements of those songs, especially someone like Cardi B singing "Money," you know, <laughs> I can't say the lines. <laughs> for people to hear but you know it's like it's all about the money it's all about the money and that's when she's coming out she's white for the first time and she's like this is this is what it's all about and then you know you come back later on and it's more of a power song and her being powerful in the moment and i think what that does is allows allows people to see themselves now those these topics are still relevant but when you put frame it and with music like that it makes it culturally relevant to this generation you know showing it's, to me, I see it as a tie between that generation and this generation. You know, the 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 power that's there. Yeah, that how how things may not have changed as much as we would In like. Some to think. ways. Yeah. Well, I think that's why that throughout the whole series so far, they've in, they've sort of uh, incorporated, you know, poetry and different things from different time periods that weren't really from that time period, to sort of show how like things things are. Uh, basically the same as they ever been they're just more mm -hmm. more hidden or mm -hmm. you know but yeah it's yeah it's yeah there's it's they really do a great job and and if, if you listen to the their their companion podcast thing where they talk about a lot of the stuff a lot of the writers are constantly arguing about different things about like is this work or not work um they they were arguing over like what kind of shoe for the whole shoe thing and mm -hmm. as it turns out that specific year that this happens, the stiletto was first in introduced mm. to the shoe, which, you know, it definitely plays into that a good bit. Yeah, yeah the stiletto has, has its moment. <laughs> yeah, Ruby using her power. Oh, my God. Uh, all right, so this is the fun part. Uh, what we do is we kind of wrap things up. We give our final thoughts. We give a score, one to five. Kind of guess where we're going with that. And what you want to hear is our favorite scene. Uh, stiletto, not stiletto. What's our favorite scene? Uh, that, uh, but before we do, <laughs> if you're enjoying this, and I hope you are, please subscribe below. Uh, we, we're, we're trying to get there. You know where we're trying to go. So please subscribe and help us out. Uh, hit the like button or dislike button. That helps as well. And if you want to get notified, there's a bell. Hit that bell. Smash that bell, I think they say. Or smash the like button. I don't know. Smash it all. And uh, <laughs> give us... Give us feedback <laughs> down below. Make some comments. We want to know what you what you thought. Uh, who's your favorite character? That that's what I want to know. Is it is it Letty? Is it Tick? Is it Montrose? Is it mm -hmm. Ruby? Uh, who's your favorite? Um, uh, that's that's an interesting question. Uh, uh, yeah. So do that. Uh, give us some comments. All right, guys. Let's do it. Final thoughts. Our score, one to five. Favorite scene. Uh, keep it quick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, Slapman, you are up first. This is a really strong episode. Um, I still don't think it matches the first episode for me personally. Um, but it's still very strong and it's, it, th this show is still doing things that I think no other show has can do and I, I mean that from a storytelling perspective from a political stance perspective from a an acting perspective like from everything it's just it's above and beyond what anything else on tv is like right now um and i cannot and i can't recommend this show enough um the the performances were stunning this episode yes. um from everybody but the especially um ruby and um montrose's act actor and actress um they 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 really nailed it and they really gave they 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 brought a lot of character to characters that haven't had the screen time that they've deserved and it's it it it's awesome. And it was, and like Chris said earlier, it's, it's got a lot of WTF moments that just make you want to come back. And I am so excited to see where, where we go from here. I'm so excited to see 
Um, what uh, I'm so excited to see, like, where we what what's going on? Like the thing that Ruby put into the sheriff's office. What the hell was that? Oh, yeah. What the hell's going on with the sheriff? What <laughs> the hell's going on with the um with the uh, Christina? What what the hell's going on with uh, all the pictures that Letty's been taken? Like mm. what the hell's going on with the uh, um with what uh um Tick found out? like yeah oh i forgot about that yeah so it's just it's it it just it's a show that just keeps building and building and building and doing more and doing more and while for me personally it still hasn't really quite reached the heights of the first and third episodes it it's still going very strong and still better than anything else that we have on tv um so I'm going to give this episode a 4.75 out of five. Nice. Um, and uh, my favorite scene. Which one? Which one will we choose? Drum roll, if you please. I think <laughs> it might be the realization, like the scene where Christina talks to, to Ruby and Christina is like, if, the, it was an invitation to do whatever the fuck you want mm, or something along funny. those lines. And that realization that Ruby has, and then just she goes and like, does that. <laughs> and she goes and does that. That, that scene, mm -hmm. that scene is really strong. And, uh, and it, it's a really great conversation between two very strong characters. Polar opposites too. Yeah, I, good yeah. choice. Good choice. Vanessa, you are up next. What did you find? What's your score? Favorite scene? Uh, five. I can't not Yay. give all these a five. I am enthralled and entranced by them. Um, so it, it's very. This is very, very difficult for me to pick a favorite scene. My final wow. thoughts. I'm sure are going to agree with all of you, especially with Chris. It's a phenomenal show. Just amazing. The actors have really just poured everything. The writers, Misha Green, everyone has just poured so much into this and you feel it. But so I have to I have to touch on two things. I can't I can't have one. There's so much and I have to at least touch on two. One steal it. Steal it. Steal it. Yeah. <laughs> one is Ruby's kind of the her metamorphosis. Her, that it it broke my heart that she had to experience normal life, to, to know what it was like just to walk down the street, to read a newspaper in public, to, 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 to not be black for a day broke my heart. And then it was kind of <laughs> not, not, so this is, this is my favorite scene. That's, that's my, that metamorphosis really is just one of my favorite topics that they've covered. But my, my, my favorite scene is Montrose is coming out because it was just so, so powerful. I cried a lot during that scene. Oh, to see nice. Just that whole moment of him come, just everything that he's been through through the whole episode, his metamorphosis, as you said, just was so beautiful to me. And him seeing him spin around the dance floor and then kiss his, his companion was just, so much for me to handle that I, it was I, I was very i think that maybe that's a little bit why i forget what happens after that because that was just such a strong strong moment yeah they mentioned earlier that they hadn't kissed and then they you yeah, know, sort of made that exactly. kiss even it, more powerful yeah it really really great, did great moment great it was he got to smile for the first time and yeah five episodes well and then thinking about too realizing he didn't say a word to the whole thing he didn't uh, say a word to tick when he walked in he got beat up he didn't say a word to his companion about what happened who did it anything he didn't say a word when he was dancing around getting ready he didn't say a word at the end there but everything was just spoken kind of through through him you know you still felt it what he right. was saying yeah yeah once once the uh, once the beating happened he was he was just kind of shut down mm -hmm. all right christopher G more final thought score favorite scene. You know, it, I, I love how you can sort of use <clears throat> fantastical and horror elements to really sort of get to the the root of certain issues, and and this episode definitely does that. And um, it, it also, you know, 
even when people do horrible things, you know, you can sort of see that they're they're trying to grasp onto something that they're either afraid to delve into or that when they delve into it, they realize that, you know, this isn't all the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Sometimes you have to give up a little bit of your soul to do that. And I think that's what happens with the Ruby character. And you see that full fledged, you know, to where she's like, yeah, she gets the comfort of being a feeling like, you know, the other side lives, but at the same time, she also has to be abusive and has to be become what those other people are and lose a little bit of herself in that. And is it really worth giving that up just to have some more comfort in life? You know, or, or you have the Montrose character who th throughout his life, he's trying to fight against his feelings and he's trying not to, to be full fledged into it. And, and it takes him having to sort of like do something horrible to sort of save what he thinks is saving his son's life. But at the same time, sh you know, shutting that door on that relationship with his son, you know, um, but at the same time, you know, it, it, it sort of frees them up to sort of to lose the inhibitions and, and to realize that the life that he really does needs and deserved is right, right in front of him if he just embraced it. And um, granted, this 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 movie has a lot of ugly moments, a lot of gross moments, you know, that whether it be the the gore or her, the host stiletto scene, which is, you know, it, it's very brutal. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you see, you also see a lot of heart in this. You know, you, you see that um, the Atticus is constantly fighting against, you know, becoming what his father was or father beat him into being, you know, that he learned in the war to be so brutal. He had this level of brutality that that he doesn't. He, I love that line where he's talking to black guy. I don't want you to be I don't want you to be afraid of me. Cause you can tell that he loves her, you know, and that, that love scene is amazing, you know? Um, and, and you can also see that, you know, it, it's great to see Montrose, like you guys said, smile for once, you know? Mm, yes. Um, and you also see Ruby that like this whole time, she's basically been trying to, to fight to sort of be this person that she's not, she's trying to, you know, um, and, uh, it takes going through that whole experience to realize that. Um, so yeah, this moment had this movie, this this movie, this episode has so many great moments that really make it stand out. It makes it one of the best shows on television for me right now. That uses uses effects and all this stuff to its uh, to its best use, you know. And it has moments that really stand out and make you question things. And by the way, when you talked about that glyph thing that she that Ruby put in there, it's the same glyph that he was looking at. It says die. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, yeah. he so, realizes that at the end when he and he calls his uh his girl in South Korea, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I again, I, I'll give this this episode a five out of five. Um, and um, as for favorite scene, um, uh, there's so many. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to say the sex scene because I feel like that's. You could really see their connection in that. It, it, it was it's very powerful. Yeah, it and, was. Uh, yeah, because you could see that he's when he when he leashed out at you know when he you know when he hit his was about to kill his dad. You could see that he was embarrassed by that, and and it's something he's trying to keep under control. And you can see that he really loves her, and you see that moment where she's in the bathtub and he's talking to her and stuff. It's just some really those beautiful moments, you know. But other than that, the transformation stuff is yeah, amazing. It's so amazing and gross. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, I, I, there's not much more I can say about this. Everything you guys are saying is absolutely right. Uh, this this show, I, I'm really enjoying it. I've had some people, you know, reach out to me and they're not enjoying it as much. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a few and, friends that are sad. Yeah, that too. sad. But, man, mm -hmm. I'm I'm really really liking this, and it's uh, I love the the balance between the characters, the heart and, and the gore, you know, it's bringing, you know, basically we're getting uh, each one is hitting a subgenre of the horror, right? We started off with a monster movie. Then we went to the witchy poo movie, right? With all the witches and warlocks. Mm -hmm. And then we had a haunted house movie and then we mm -hmm. had um, Indiana Jones. Jones. And now we've got body horror Cronenberg. or American werewolf in London. Yeah. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. Or werewolf film uh, in a way uh, it's, it's pretty amazing that they're doing that without being 
you know, without having to just say it and do it, you know, they're yeah. just they're weaving it in. Um, so I'm really enjoying that and I can't wait to see what we get next. Um, and, but really what winning is the characters. I look five. This was, this was, uh, I really think this one, uh, I'm, I've liked every single episode. Um, I, I don't know if I'm, you know, every single episode has moments that I'm not going to forget. And I like that this one called back to some really cool moments in the second one, except for they played out differently. Like when he caught on fire and when he was yeah. you know, having the dream about escaping from the, from the, from the castle collapsing. And he, he was seeing his ancestor running out, but she, this time she stops. And that's kind of, kind of, kind of frightening what, you know, cause that means something that's going to come back. That's mm -hmm. coming back. Write this down. Put a quarter in the jar. <laughs> That's coming back. That wasn't there just for no reason at all. I um. So yeah, my favorite scene though is is you, you took it with Montrose's transformation at the end. <laughs> I, I really did like that. But if not okay. that, it is going to be Ruby's last line. Uh, you know, we we got it. It's right there. It's like oh yeah. Not only are we do we know it, we were shown how it happens. Uh, which I was kind of guessing that's exactly what we were going to get as soon as something happened to Ruby. Um, spoilers. <laughs> if you haven't watched the show, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. I just, and that line just, just uh, yeah. Put it on a shirt. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It was good. You know what it kind of reminds me of too, though. It feeds into the stereotype a little bit of people yelling at the, at the screen when you're watching a movie. Ah! <laughs> so her doing that is like a little kind of to that stereotype, right? What? Yeah, I, I that was awesome. There's so many, just in talking to you guys about it, so many new things kind of uh, de uh, develop in my head, you know? Mm -hmm. I understand it more. Yeah, that, this is a great show. And and uh, if you're listening, and you, I, I hope you're enjoying us talking about it, thank you for hanging out with us for the this past 30 minutes or so to uh, relive the episode and, and discuss our thoughts. Uh, looking forward to doing that for the rest of the season. And if you like this, we're also doing Hamble, uh, the first season from 2013. Go back and check that out. Uh, we're we're going back old school, back mm -hmm. retro seven years to you know now it's on network. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're having fun two two nights a week. We're doing mm -hmm. you know doing each of these. Um, uh, and um, what two better shows on par with each other? Uh, oh, I, I would yeah. say, uh, at least yeah. for me personally. Um, yeah. All right, uh, Christopher Slapman, Vanessa, thank you for joining me tonight. Oh, always a so pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's always fun. We're always wonder what's going to happen next on this show. Mm -hmm. well, Speaking of are. what's going to happen next, man, those previews for next week. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but are we going to get some? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Stop! I didn't see it. I have, I have, a, <laughs> I have a social media friend who's a stunt uh, woman who uh, has a small cameo, and uh, it was an extra in one of those scenes. Ooh. Oh, cool. Nice, nice. Oh, right. no, it's good. That's Let's good. say good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night.